What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nicole Espresso and welcome back to another video here today on the channel. Today, we're doing something that I'm not really sure how to necessarily go about this in some ways, but it's not anything dealing strictly with Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, any other game in particular like that. Today, really though, I just want to take a step back and admire something with you guys because I've been looking at this kind of stuff for years now. I actually made a tweet probably about a year back whenever Advanced Warfare was the main game in which it just absolutely blew my mind because, well, if you look back at the graphical comparisons from, say, the cutscenes in the campaign from Black Ops 2 to Advanced Warfare or even Black Ops 3, it is just absolutely incredible how different they are. And really that all boils down to one thing, the mo-capping technology that has gone into a lot of the development of games. For those that don't know how the games work and how the cutscenes work out, stuff like that, even just the in-game mechanics, everything is done with real actors and all of it is created in such a way that it's real actors acting on a stage and then it then gets transported into a game as a product of something digital. And I think that is probably one of the coolest things to see that progression and in such a short amount of time, it's crazy to think about where we've been and where we're now going. So just for an example, I'll toss you guys up some cinematics of the campaign from Black Ops 2, Advanced Warfare, and then Black Ops 3. Now, there's gonna be some clear differences that you'll see here throughout the graphical comparisons of the cutscenes and all that kind of stuff, because Advanced Warfare took a slightly different approach here to the game cinematics rather than Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3. Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3 had all in-game rendering things as it happened. You'd be able to see these cinematics that rendered out real time. However, Advanced Warfare took a little bit of a different approach and made pre-rendered cinematics. So the difference between that is that the rendering of the game whenever this happens in real time, if it were to say happen in Black Ops 3 or Black Ops 2, is the game was still processing all of the information at the same time as you were progressing. As the cinematic cutscene was going on, it was all rendering that out real time. However, in Advanced Warfare and as well as it looks like it's going to be happening in Infinite Warfare as well from some of the screenshots that have been a officially released, it was something that there were high quality video files, maybe AVI files or something similar, very high quality video files that were placed into the game code and then triggered whenever you finished a mission or something like that. So instead of it rendering real time, it literally pulled up something that was already rendered and it just had to play it back. So in terms of hardware usage, it is a lot less intensive to have those video files and then as a result, you can also have a lot higher quality. So that still though does not take away from the fact that it was most capped as well. This was something that it was still using the same technology, but just because it was not being rendered real time, it allowed it to be lossless and there's no real compression to it. So the original formatting was exactly the same essentially. So it's something that it does slightly vary, but it is very cool nonetheless. But the mocapping process, for those that don't know how it works and just how cool it actually is, you suit up in these compression suits and on them they have little balls that will then capture the motion. It's almost like a sensor on top of it that'll sense anytime you move and then it will relay that data back to the computer that is inputting all of the data. And then from there, there also is a camera that will be right in front of your face that captures your entire facial feature everything in high quality like that that once again relays it back and then after all that kind of stuff is suited up here with it well then it all comes down to the acting of it and the main staging room usually has around 60 cameras in it so that almost every single angle you can imagine is being captured so that said that's how you get all the perfect cinematic angles all the angles in gameplay that then are crafted from that there's a lot of stuff to pull from. So it literally just comes down to literally capturing what somebody does and then putting it in a game. And really to think about where we've come from in just the past couple of years, looking back at these graphics to where we are now and where we're advancing to, in two to three short years, that change is just completely different. Sure, the console hardware limitations might be something that plays into it because as you know, the current generation consoles are just a lot better than the previous generation, but still it's just crazy, I think, to see just how far these graphics have come and what we've been able to do. So the process itself, I find very intriguing and I think it's one of the coolest things in the industry and then the progression of it in such a short time interval, I think is just mind blowing to me. So this video might have been a little bit different here for you guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy though. I just wanted to showcase a little bit of where we've been, where we're going, and then just the process in between. So I find this stuff super cool. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. And if you did, make sure you drop a like rating down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Do you guys think it's crazy how far we've come now just in two to three years since Black Ops 2? 
And if it does or does not, do you find the mocapping process intriguing at all? Love to hear your thoughts. Thank you dudes so much for watching. Subscribe if you guys are new. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so every little bit does help and is of course greatly appreciated. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get in touch with me outside of YouTube. Stay connected, all that kind of stuff. So that link is down there in the description below. But thank you dudes so much for watching. My name is Nicole Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.